Hi! Okay, so I haven't done a silent film critique in a while. And I actually found... <laughs> I actually found a Harrison Ford silent film actor that I didn't have to pay for to watch. <laughs> oh my goodness, I was so happy. So... Here we go. <laughs> so, the film is titled The Primitive Lover, and it was released in 1922. I couldn't find a lot about this film. Um, but anyway, it's a romantic comedy. I'm not big on romantic comedy. I didn't know that when I watched it, but here's the thing. It's the 20s. <laughs> I've watched a few, like the It Girl is a romantic comedy, pretty much, and so y you gotta think about that. When you hear romantic comedy, these days, you know, but in the 20s, they're hilarious. They are so much fun. So, um, they're so pure and just joyous. So, but here's the thing about this one. So it starts off... <laughs> Don't let it throw you off. I'm, I'm going to give some spoilers with this because I'm sure you're going to watch it and then I'm going to want to turn it off. So... <laughs> So it starts off with this shipwreck, you know, they're out in the middle of the ocean and everything, and there's like extreme overacting, like beyond, you know, because I was complaining about some of the overacting and then would say, but, you know, that's, I don't know, this was beyond overacting. Okay. It does cut off from that. <laughs> um, the wife, Phyllis, played by Constance Talmage, Talmage, I, I'm sure I'm butchering her last name, but, um, her character's name is Phyllis, and she's reading this book, you know, one of her wonderful books, and she asks her husband, played by Harrison Ford, Hector. She's like, would you sacrifice yourself? You know, she's giving this scenario, and that's where all the overacting came from and everything. She's like, would you do that? And he just gives us a look like, I... I <laughs> Basically, this is a couple that their marriage is on the rocks. And so, um, you know, she wants this adventurous, romantic, sweep you off your feet kind of a thing, and he's not giving that to her, and, um, the, it changes into, they go to her mother's house, her parents' place, and during dinner, all of a sudden, this person comes in. This person has, he was lost in the jungle. They thought him to be dead. Well, he suddenly shows up. And, uh, it turns out that it was a publicity stunt for him to be gone, for him to go lost. Hector was a part of it. So Hector's getting 
and and I felt bad for Hector. I really did, because before they left for for dinner, you know, he's saying, "I I just want you to be happy." And then, at the house, all of a sudden, he says, "Well, I." When the newspapers confirmed that you were gone, you know, all of a sudden she's mad at him because he knew about the publicity stunt. And then the friend is mad because they got married. I mean, everybody's ganging up on Hector and it's like, he, he doesn't know what else to do. So, I mean, the the parents are mad at him, the friend is mad at him, uh, Phyllis is mad at him, well, but then you can kind of see where she is mad at him, but at the same time she's kind of confused because of everything. And this is where I was totally relating to the story, because my last relationship was like this. I was like, holy cow. And I've been single ever since. <laughs> Not so much because of what happened, but I mean, it was just like everyone and then some were in our business. And it was like people were telling me how to deal with him. People were telling them, you know, telling him that I was doing things so we were yelling at each other and then we would step back and we'd be like why are, why are we mad <laughs> and then there were other things that were factoring into us just yelling at each other and it was just it was awful you know nobody would let us just have a relationship it was just ridiculous and it was like so I was while I was watching this I was like oh my gosh I totally understand and I was when you watch it as as the movie continued I was understanding his side of it and I was understanding her side of it <laughs> it's just like, ah, oh. because I was the one that had to break off the relationship due to reasons, and I didn't want to. It was just, it had to be done. It was one of those instances, and it was just like when I was watching this, you know, because Hector, they decided to divorce, and... Hector was like, well, I, I just want you to be happy. And then they decide to go to divorce court. And they're going through the divorce and everything. Well, then... She... <laughs> she talks to him and she's just yelling and screaming. She's like, I didn't want to go through the divorce. And he's confused. He doesn't understand. She... He thought that she wanted to, and I mean, because everybody was mad at him. It's just... <laughs> Stay out of it! <laughs> now, one thing to understand is the reason that the movie is called The Primitive Lover is because the friend... Oh, I'm blanking on his name. I wish I'd written it down with all my other little notes that I... Because usually when I do this, I have my laptop and it's still down. And, um, but the friend who ends up, um, after the divorce, yeah, guess who starts romancing? Phyllis. <laughs> so he wrote this book and it's called the primitive lover, you know, and he's Im trying to impress the crap out of her, saying that, you know, he 
um, you know, he stayed in the jungle, he could show her how, to, he could whisk her away, and he could do all this stuff and everything. And, and <laughs> Hector is just feeling like, he's feeling so useless. Well, but he he doesn't want to lose her, you know? He didn't want to go through, and, but he knows because she said she didn't want to go through the divorce. He knows that he can't lose her. And as the movie goes on, he gets help from, from like the best source ever. This is one of those movies where you watch and the help that he gets is from the the greatest source ever. I loved it. So, um, and I'm not going to give it away because it's, it's just fantastic. And as the story progresses, um, cause I don't want to give too much away. I, I, I hate doing that cause I think I've, I've done it like three times. <laughs> and with this one, Um, you know, after the divorce and once he gets help, once Hector gets help, um, from this particular individual, that's where things start getting, um, intense. Well, not, not so much intense. It starts working in his favor, but in a crazy way. <laughs> we'll just say it that way. Um, but um, yeah, so don't be thrown off by the beginning when it's like superly over dramatic, because you know the over dramatic acting, and you're like, okay. This is weird, because I thought that, too. And, um... <laughs> I was like, where is this going? And then it cut off to where she... It, well, it cuts off to a page in a book, and then it shows her reading. And so... Yeah, I'll I'll give that a little bit cuz <laughs> um but for, for waiting so long trying to find a film with Harrison Ford, the silent film actor. <laughs> I was very impressed with him. Um, I have a feeling I, I'm going to try and find more with him because I have a feeling that he did westerns. I think that's what his main thing was and you'll see what I mean when you watch um it doesn't start out that way it's not like this is a western or anything no. but you'll see what I mean <laughs> um golly I wish I could remember who the other but Yeah, Constance apparently, when I looked this up, Constance apparently was supposed to be doing another movie. And um, the year before this came out, this came out in uh, 1922, and she was supposed to be doing another movie, and kind of like all of a sudden she was signed on to do this while she was doing that. And it was... 
it was like a mysterious thing why she was suddenly signed on to do this movie. So apparently they had someone already. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong on that. Because like I said, I'm not finding very much on this movie. So, um, again, if you have... I. I welcome any information on any of my silent films that I create on any of the silent films that I critique. I'm totally fine with that because I'm, and if you correct me, I'm not, <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. This is actually based off of a play, um, by Edgar Selwyn. The play is called The Divorcee and originally it was supposed to, the movie was supposed to be under that name, and they changed it. I don't know why. If you do, I would love to know. <laughs> um, and Frances Marion, who we've heard her name quite a bit, <laughs> she was the one who was a writer for the film. So Edgar was the one who wrote the play, and then film was Francis Marion. Um, this is on DVD. You can find it on YouTube. That's where I found it. <laughs> and the only problem with YouTube a lot of times is you find different, um, times for it. Like, um, some of the Georges Malaise, it'll say that it's supposed to be like three minutes or four minutes, five minutes, and you get two minutes of that one. So say it's supposed to be five minutes and I only get two and a half minutes. So that's the only problem. Sometimes they get cut off. So, um, yeah, it depends on the uploader. So that's that's the only. The one thing I did find, the, the final thing that I did find was that there were mixed reviews. That's the one thing I did, I tried so hard to find that one. There were mixed reviews for this film. Um, some said that it was highly entertaining. I found it very entertaining and other people said that it was dull and pointless and actually in certain areas I can see where they were where they would say that because there were um, bits and pieces where it seemed to just kind of not so much drag because remember when I critiqued Ben-Hur and I said that um like the pirate scene where they're fighting pirates and everything and it seems like okay we've gone on far enough we we've seen the pirates okay <laughs> let's move on um it wasn't so much like that it was like there were just parts where it seemed like can we move on to the next scene I mean It just kind of stopped, if, if that makes sense. It wasn't dragging. <laughs> it was like, all right. <laughs> and, um, because to kind of put it in perspective, what a lot of times I'm doing is I'm doing my artwork or I'm doing my stitchery. And so um, I'll do a stitch and I look at the screen and it's like they haven't moved. Okay, so I do another stitch. Look, they're still not moving. <laughs> and I have to look and see if I paused it or something. No. <laughs> so it just kind of felt like that. But, um, 
But the story itself, I totally understood. Um, going back to what I was saying, <laughs> there is a cabin scene, um, and it just felt like they kept going back to certain things, you know, re repetition, that's what I'm thinking of. That was the word, repetition. Okay. <laughs> I got in my head. Because <laughs> there's a cabin scene, and it was like... Um... She and that guy, the, the author of the book, they just kept standing there in the cabin. And it's like, are you going to do something? So I could see where people were saying that it was dull. Or where she kept fighting with Hector over the divorce. It was like three times she met with him. And it's like, Okay. <laughs> are you just, are you just going to throw tantrums? I I don't understand. So, I mean, there were just a few scenes that could have been um So, repetition. <laughs> we got it. So, but I enjoyed it. Um, finally seeing Harrison Ford, the silent film actor, I was impressed with him. Um, seeing him actually act. <laughs> he was a very good looking actor. <laughs> Why is it always those that are long gone? I just don't get it. <laughs> it's always my luck. <laughs> the story itself, I totally related to because my last relationship, it was like people kept jumping in and confusing the crap out of both of us. And it was just like, why are we fighting with each other? You know, it was confusing me. It was confusing him we were being torn apart and it was just like the relationship is done because we we couldn't yeah i mean so i i understood this one it was realistic i mean being a romantic comedy yeah there is comedy in it i mean it, yeah but when you've been through something like that yeah <laughs> Um, there was one, gen the gentleman that had the, and you'll know who I'm talking about. He's this big guy and he's got the mustache, the iconic mustache that you usually see in these silent films. I may not have seen him before. And I, again, I didn't write down his name. Um, I should have printed it, but it's late at night, so. <laughs> but, of course, I will, um, put down in the description everything. Um, he may have been in a few Buster Keaton movies, but I could be wrong, because there were at least a couple of, because there was... The gentleman who worked with Buster Keaton, who had that look, and then the gentleman who worked with um, Max Sennett, who had that look. But he was skinnier. So, um, and again, I'm blanking on names, but it's late at night, so. <laughs> but anyway, he, there is a gentleman also in this, and I will, of course, um make reference to him in the description um, to see if he's in any of those movies. 
Um, but anyway, yeah. Again, 1922. Um, finally Harrison Ford got to see him. <laughs> um, it got mixed reviews when it came out. Um, it's based on a play by Edgar Selwyn called The Divorcee. Um, romantic comedy. And it is on DVD. So, um, and it's, it's a little over an hour. Um, so, but yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It, it was, it was a fun film. 